What's up everyone, it's your boy Nornrad89 here and bringing you another ranking video. We know we already did our top 10 worst of 2022, so today we're going to do the top 10 best of 2022. And of course, this is just my opinion, my list on my favorite films. I might have some couple honorable mentions in here as well, so we have like maybe 11 or 12 films. And like I said, these are just my favorites from this year. But I would love to hear from all of you in the comments section, share your list. So let's get into this video. Roll it. So let's get our couple honorable mentions out of the way real quick. And these ones are really good films too. But like I said, just honorable mentions. We're going to have Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. I really had a great connection with this film. This is the Pinocchio film that reached out and grabbed me and would be the one that I can see myself returning to the most. I know it's a very dark film compared to most of the other Pinocchio type stories, but I think Guillermo del Toro knocked this one out of the park. And another honorable mention is going to be Jordan Peele's Nope. Nope is such a fabulous film. Some of my favorite characters in this film, like of all year are some of my favorites and I like this film it has such a cool like kind of Stranger Things type vibe to it investigation story really strong sci-fi vibes and some good horror in it as well so those are my two honorable mentions now let's get down to the top 10 so bringing us into the top 10 is going to be Avatar The Way of Water this film I believe just recently crossed a billion dollars internationally with the whole cinema earning money Man, yes, James Cameron slammed it really down hard and brought us a new film. And for me, Avatar The Way of Water, I actually find this film. I am I have to watch it more times, but right now, as it stands, I like this one better than Avatar. It's a, an astounding achievement in cinema. And like I said, the story for me is a little bit more interesting in this one, being that Jake Soley has a family now and kids, and they're kind of more the main focus. We do have Stephen Lang back as our main villain character. Yes, so Avatar The Way of Water. Water. Like I said, definitely Slam Dunk is a very strong film and earns this number 10 spot on my list. Coming in at number 9, we have the film that I got most emotionally involved with this year, and that's Clerks 3. This is the one that I like, I really got like emotionally like sad with this one. I cried heavy duty. And yeah, it's probably just because Kevin Smith knows how to write characters that I really get involved with and I love like you know what I mean I just get really attached to them and Randall Dante you know all the Elias in here everything like this by this third film I'm really invested with these clerk characters and like I said Kevin Smith is one of my favorite writers and directors so he really did come out with a good solid story and it's very emotionally impactful and so yeah Clerks 3 earns this number nine spot on my top 10 of the year. Coming in at number eight, we have the latest Scream film. And yes, this is my second favorite in the Scream franchise. So that's why I'm very high on this film because the Scream franchise was kind of just, I uh, wasn't really that high on it, kind of dead in the water for me. And this new film really revitalized my love for the Scream franchise. And like I said, it's my second favorite. And I think the new cast is fabulous. And I'm so excited to see what Scream 6 brings us. I believe in April that film comes out. So I'm so excited to see what that film brings us next year. Coming in at number seven, we have Hulu's Hellraiser. And this was such a fabulous retelling of Clive Barker's novella, The Hellbound Heart. And I think Jamie Clayton really knocked the pinhead role out of the park. The Cenobite designs are off the charts, and I think this has one of the best stories and scripts all year, and that's why it's here at this top 10 list, because I think Hellraiser was a badass film, really brought brought the, the heat, this film, for sure. The only thing for me that they really need to amp up with the next one, which I'm hoping they're able to bring Jamie Clayton and David Bruckner back, the only thing I wish, I hope they amp up is the gore factor. That really needs to get turned up to 11 in the next film. Like I said, I hope they both get to come back because this Hulu Hellraiser was a very big success for me this year. Rolling in at our number six spot, we have Prey, the latest addition to the Predator franchise. And Amber Midthunder plays as Naru, is one of my favorite female like leads in a film this year. And Prey was so amazing man the the gore effects the predator design the story everything about this film was just really top notch for me i've watched this film three times already and prey is like the the bomb for real all the films on this list i've watched multiple times so far this year 
And yeah, Prey is just one that like Hulu popped it out and I was like, it's another one. Hulu dropped a lot of cool content this year for real. We're going to have another Hulu film coming up pretty soon. But yeah, Prey is one of my favorite new additions to the Predator franchise. Right up there with Predators and the first Predator film for me. Like, Because this one, I can see every time I return to it, I'm just the nostalgia is just going to grow higher and higher. And like I said, Amber Mid-Thunder, I think is fabulous as the lead in this role. So now we're here at the top five of the year. And like I said, these are just my favorite five. But these are the five that really stuck it hard for me and the ones that I like returned to the most and I like said these are the ones that I like had to buy you know these are the must own ones I do have to find me a copy of this one coming up right now but it's Hulu's Fresh and this was a fabulous fresh you know new experience in a film no pun intended but Sebastian Stan Daisy Edgar Jones it's just a great cast and it's such a small cast a very simple story but it's a very kind of believable story especially for someone who's trying to like get into the dating world you can totally kind of understand that side of the film and stuff like that and the way it plays out it's amazing like for real this is one of those horror films that just it had me it's got style it's got great acting it's got a fabulous soundtrack and like i said this is one of those films that I really need to get myself a physical copy of. It's the only one I feel like I, I've, I have most of these films on physical copy, except for a lot of the Hulu stuff like Prey, Hellraiser, and Fresh and stuff. But yeah, I definitely need to pick up one of this one. And man, because I can't wait to return to it again. I've already watched this one twice already this year too. And it holds up for sure. And like I said, Fresh was probably one of the biggest surprise besides another film that you're going to find out in a little bit, a couple more spots. This was one of the biggest surprises for me this year, for sure. Coming in at number four spot is going to be Ty West's X. And man, X is just such a fabulous slasher film. And it's got everything I want. It's got, you know, raunchy nudity. It's got great gore effects. It's got awesome music. The cinematography is fantastic in this film. And Ty West is just proving to me with all the films that he's been doing that he is a champion of horror, and he's a king of period piece filming, and I love that. So Ty West is just one of my favorite directors in the game right now, and I'm so excited to see what Maxine has to offer for us next year. I don't think we know a month it's coming out in yet, but Maxine is going to be dropped next year, and I'm so freaking excited for this film, man, because what he created with this kind of, you know, this world with X and Pearl, you know, I can't wait. It's going to be one of my favorite, probably like if the three films. It's going to be easily one of the best horror trilogies out there to date. Coming in at a number three spot, we have Top Gun Maverick, another one big, big billion dollar earning film this year. Tom Cruise just proves that he's like pretty much the king of blockbusters and Top Gun Maverick was one that I had high hopes for, high expectations for, and it delivered and it's actually better than the first one. I'm one of those people that think it's better than the first one and I actually really enjoy Top Gun. I think that first film is a fun film. It's not a perfect film, but it's a fun 80s film about, you know, flyboys in the 80s and stuff, but Top Gun Maverick just has such a bigger heart to it, better acting in it, and I like the culmination and the way the third act takes place. It's just, it's fantastic. And some of the, one of my favorite um, theater experiences that I had this year was Top Gun Maverick. So that's why it's also sitting here on this top 10 list, because it's just a fantastic film that, like I said, more people need to be on board with the theater because that's what you go to theaters for, is for stuff like Avatar The Way of Water is another great example fabulous amazing theater experience and Top Gun Maverick is right up there as well these are those kind of blockbuster movies that you need to experience at the movies and it pays off every penny because I really did enjoy it now coming in at number two the runner-up to the top dog is going to be my favorite horror film of this year and that's Men Alex Garland's Men is just a gorgeous film and the biggest surprise that I had this year because this is one of those movies that I heard a lot of rumblings about. There were a lot of negative reviews, but also a lot of positive reviews. It was kind of very split. I bought this film on physical media and that was the first time I watched it and just staying up late at night after the kids and everybody else was asleep and I watched this film and man, Alex Garland floored me. Like I said, to me, this is probably one of the most gorgeous films I've seen all year. Has one of my favorite scores that I've heard this year. And it's just an amazing 
horror film, but it's I know it's one film that I wouldn't recommend to just any viewer. You definitely have to be into body horror. You have to be into films that are more metaphorical and more symbolic and stuff like that because that's what this film is. It's not necessarily a character-driven story or a story-heavy, you know, dialogue type film it's more like i said symbolism and metaphorical and stuff like that and now we're here at the top dog and you know we couldn't have the top 10 of 2022 did you really think we were gonna have a top 10 and i wasn't gonna put the batman on this freaking list come on baby the batman is for me the best i was considering putting men above batman just because it was the biggest surprise for me this year when i went into a film and floored me and I was like holy shit it's like this is fucking fabulous but the Batman is one of those films that I knew once Matt Reeves was attached to the project and I knew what the story was and what he was going for with this kind of neo-noir dark Batman style tour storytelling that he wanted to do I knew they were gonna knock out of the park and I like Robert Pattinson's performance in here Zoe Kravitz Paul Dano Colin Farrell I think everybody does a fantastic job and like Andy Serkis we didn't get a lot of Alfred I'm hoping we get some more Alfred in the next film and a little bit more uh, Bruce Wayne of Robert Pattinson's performance to see that side of his performance but for me this Batman film is my second favorite Batman film of all time so yes I had to put it here in this top 10 list and it is the number one champion the crown holder of the title for best film of 2022. But like I said in the beginning of this video, this is just my list, my uh, 12, I had 12 here with a couple honorable mentions with it on there. So 12 films that I really enjoyed this year of 2022. And I would love to hear from all of you in the comments section, drop what you think of this list or some of the movies that I didn't mention, some other ones that you saw this year that you thought were amazing. Cause 2022 was, you know, there were some really big stinkers this year, but also some really huge bangers of films this year in cinema. I think it's just growing. I'm so excited because I think 2022, 2023 is gonna even be another new revival for movie theaters and stuff like that and cinema and everything. I think it's going to be booming in the next year. So yes, King is my top 10, like I said. So thanks for sticking around with me all. Most importantly, be sure to like and subscribe so you get more videos like this and happy new year. I hope you all have an awesome new year and a good time with your family and carry on some great vibes into 2023. And most importantly, have a safe and happy day. Peace out.